Hello, welcome to Windshine Audio channel. I'm Alvin, owner of Windshine Audio. Let's talk about Dina Flip's Iris DDC today. You might have heard of the term DAC, a digital to analog converter. But what is a DDC? This particular unit here is a DDC from Dina Flip's. It is a digital to digital converter. It converts the USB signal and output cleaner digital output and it has to work hand in hand with an external DAC. I have an external DAC here. Um, it accepts coaxial input, AES APU input, and USB input. So you may ask, why do you need a DDC to convert the USB signal to cleaner digital signal where you already have a USB input on the DAC uh, itself? So um, in general, the USB input of the DAC may not be as good as um, a, a dedicated DDC like this. Reason being is the module inside this DAC may be a simple USB to I2S conversion without um, the noise barrier or optocoupler to, to reduce the noise of the USB. So we know that noise is harmful to the sound quality and Dina Phillips go through the, the trouble to design this DDC is really to reduce the noise of the USB. So this Iris DDC here, let me fit it order. This Iris DDC here accepts USB input and it uploads cleaner digital signal through coaxial, optical, AES EBU, and I2S over RG45 and I2S over HDMI. This particular unit accepts USB input. Dina Flips has Hermes DDC and Gaia DDC accept more digital inputs. We'll cover that in another video. But in this video, we are going to talk about this Iris DDC. So as you can see, there are many components inside this DDC. Right, let me have a pointer. AC filter, all core transformer, a bunch of capacitor and power regulator to change to convert the AC voltage to DC voltage. Not a simple DC voltage, but a low noise, high speed super regulator, I would say. There are eight pieces of uh, linear regulator here to convert the AC to DC. Of course, it goes through rectifier, uh, reservoir capacitor, and uh, then it converts the AC to DC, DC to cleaner DC again. So power supply is pretty important for audio quality. Uh, we know that. And uh, Dina Flips always have the linear power supply built in into their product. And you will notice that Dina Flips pay a lot, a lot of attention in power supply for that reason. So we have USB receiver here. It's not a simple USB receiver that is found on the market. It is proprietary solution where a STM MCU32 is used to convert the USB signal to I2S internally. And the I2S signal of the USB is further sent to a FPGA chip here. The FPGA is a few programmable gate array. So it does the FIFO buffer and reclocking. Now, this is important because the FIFO buffer and reclocking uh, essentially reduce the cheater to negligible level. And the reclocking itself is using the two TCXO found over here. This two little guy, a metal, metal casing TCXO, is temperature compensator crystal oscillator. Um, the output of these two TCXO remain pretty constant despite the change in temperature in the environment or in the unit itself. So it, it sort of guarantees the output of the oscillator or the uh, of the clock frequency remain pretty constant and uh, high quality um, throughout the temperature change. So it's important to know that uh, the power in the audio quality is important. The power supply makes a big, big difference in audio quality. And for digital product, the clock quality is also play an important part. So um, Dina Fritz believe in using good clock and good power supply. So this is the reason why you find this TCXO even in this entry series DDC from um, Dina Flips. And we notice there's a series of optocoupler here. The optocoupler isolate the noise from the left side to the right side. Of course, the left side is the input part and the right side is the output part. So it essentially block the noise from the left input part and the output part will be clean, free from noise, not 100%, I must say this, it's a disclaimer, there's no 100% noise-free stuff in the world. So the, the optocoupler here essentially block most of the noise from the left side to the right side. So we will have much cleaner digital output signal over all the digital output here. So this is what this Iris DDC does. 
uh, it is primarily for USB user um, when you stream music from a laptop or desktop or if you stream music from a Raspberry Pi like this I have a Raspberry Pi here um, I've not been using, I have not been using Raspberry Pi for a long time but I have it yeah I have a couple of them on the shelf so if you are using a computer for if you are using USB primarily and if you use a USB uh, signal output from a Raspberry Pi you might want to consider adding this Iris DDC in your, in your system to further improve the sound quality now let us talk about the operation it's pretty simple there's no power switch as soon as you connect the power cord to this guy the unit will power on so of course please do not power up when you have the top cover open um, do, do not do this at home it's pretty dangerous because once you apply power um, the, the exposed electricity may may hurt you <laughs> right so always power up the equipment with the cover closed but for demonstration and uh, for highly trained person like me it is fine <laughs> right so as soon as you plug in the power cord, the LED turn on here. You notice there are a couple of LED here. Again, I can't see the LED from this angle, so I hope you don't mind. I bend the head a little bit. So right, um, the USB LED turn on here to tells you that um, the unit is on. So there's only one input, so USB is selected, and the sampling rate LED 44k1, 44.1k uh, hertz light up. So it is uh, receiving 44.1k hertz. So if you stream music from the USB computer no, from USB to the computer the rest of the LED will light up accordingly so this sampling rate tell us that the unit is receiving a certain sampling rate from the computer or from the USB source so you notice that there's a setup button here um, this guy accept external clock input so if you have an external clock that can output 45 megahertz or 49 megahertz you can connect the external clock output of the source the clock source or the master clock to the two BNC connector found at the back. So um, Dynaflips has this Terra master clock um, that can output this 45 and 49 megahertz. So if you have that with you, you can connect the clock output to this um, Iris DDC to further improve the sound quality. So as you press this setup button, you'll notice the clock LED turn on and off. When the clock LED is on, Iris DDC is expecting to have the external clock 45 and 49 megahertz connected. But if you do not have the clock, please turn off the clock LED here. So as you turn off the clock LED here, Iris DDC will be using the two TCXO internally for the FIFO buffer and reclocking purpose. Right. So I talk about the, the operation of this guy. I think that's about it. Ah, I gotta show you how to connect this guy to my older DSC. So my older DSC accept coaxial input and AES EVA input. I have this DIY coaxial cable that I made many years ago. It is a studio grade cable. So I like studio grade cable. So I use Mogami, Soma cable, Gotham cable, Balan cable uh, in, in all my setup. So how, how do we use this guy? So USB input to Iris DDC connected to the computer. If you use a Windows computer, please download the driver and install it in the Windows computer. The drive, driver is available on Dynaflip's website. Just go ahead and download it and install it. It will optimize the sound quality and use it with Dynaflip's DDC or DAC. So that's for Windows computer. But if you use a Mac or Linux computer or a Raspberry Pi, you do not need to download the driver because there's no driver required for MacBook, Linux, or Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi essentially is Linux. So there's no driver required for all this. So if you use Windows computer, please download and install the driver. Right, connect the coaxial output of the Iris DDC and connect this to the extended DAC. Ta-da, it will work. And it's also important to note that the output of the Iris DDC or Hermes DDC or the Gaia DDC are 24 bit. So you have to be sure that the DAC that you are connecting to accept 24 bit signal. So if it is a much older uh, external DAC um, that only accept 16 bit input, it may not work. So that's about it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.